Now imagine how exciting it would be to be able to launch some kind of space mission from right here in the UK. Yes, well, Sean is finding out uh, whether there's money in it and whether it might actually happen. Oh, Sean, where are you now? Uh, I am right now in a replica of the Mercury capsule. So for any boffins out there, that was the US capsule used for John Glenn, the first US astronaut right to go into orbit. But this morning we're talking about the UK industry and money put into things like this, the replica of the module from the International Space Station that Tim Peake spent a lot of time in last year. In fact, should we get on board? Um, this is pretty important because £14 billion pounds is put into the UK economy by the space industry, supports tens of thousands of jobs. And if we uh, get on board and join our guest, you're in the capsule. Um, this is pretty important, Tamala. You're from the National Space Centre where we are. Uh, what kind of links exactly would the UK have with a capsule like this? Yeah, so this is the Columbus module. It's a European Space Agency built module. And of course the UK pays into the European Space Agency as a part of that. Tim Peake, when he was up for six months last year, he would have worked in here. It's a research laboratory, everything from human health to material science, developing lighter weight materials. So he would have spent a lot of time in a module just like this. Martin, uh, that word, European Space Agency, yeah. uh, a lot of questions then around the current relationship the UK might have with that after leaving the European Union. Will that change anything? Hopefully not, but it's very important to us to, to make sure we get that right because the European Space Agency is essentially the way we do almost all of our space research at the moment, uh, particularly our Earth observation science. And if we don't keep access to that, then we're going to have some problems if yeah, when we leave Europe. But actually ESA is not the European Union, so that's one of the, the comforting things for us. And our relationships with ESA will continue, we'll carry on paying money into ESA to do these programmes. But separately we do a lot of trade with Europe, don't we? 50% of our exports from the UK space industry yeah. goes yeah. to Europe. Are there some con concerns that that might change? Everybody's a bit worried because of the uncertainties. Personally, I don't think it is going to change that much because actually space is a global business. So these relationships will have to continue. Uh, while we can't live without them, they won't be able to live without us. So I think we'll be able to keep that going. Space is a global business. There we go. That, 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 nothing truer than that. Andy, you run a business that looks at space technologies. And we've heard this week the government wants to push plans along for us to get a space port in the UK where we can take off and launch things ourselves. How would businesses capitalise on that? Well, probably the biggest cost um, in all space missions is, is the launch. Um, and it's probably one of the biggest barriers to the space industry growing. And so the more we can do to reduce the cost of launch, um, the more we can do to enable our access to space, for lower costs, it really will help grow the industry. It means that we can get more satellites into space, which will create more data, which will ultimately create more applications and therefore create more revenues. Aren't there so loads of satellites growth. up in space already? There, there is, but there's plenty of space for more. <laughs> and also, they break down. You have to replace them. Got to replace them, yeah. Well, that's another part of it. All the repair, we're pretty good at that as well. Um, we're just going to switch the uh, gravity button off here because you can actually get quite a good replica of what is actually like... Actually, I'm going to have to turn that off. That's a bit awkward. What it's actually like in the International Space Station here. That's how Tim, Tim Peake learned what he had to do. We'll be learning a little bit more over the rest of the morning. That just looked like bad dad dancing, to be honest, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> they are very similar things. <laughs> Sean, thank you very much. We'll be back with you later on.